Hi, everybody. All right, Shepherding Movement. Bad idea. Bad idea. Possibly a great thought. Another guy named Kip McKean tried the same thing with the Church of Christ, and both of them ended up down the same pot, the same hole, same toilet. Both of them with fantastic ideas of, okay, here's why people want to join a shepherding movement. You want to join because, let's say I'm really struggling with, I can't ever seem to read my Bible, and I know I'm supposed to, but every day passes by and I've just postponed it for the next day and I just didn't get it done. Wouldn't it be nice to be forced to, because I really want to read the Bible. I don't live a good Christian life because I got these habits and I just, wouldn't it be nice to have somebody who I could talk to about them and tell me not to do it and hold me responsible. I need to be held responsible. That way I can live my Christian walk if I'm held responsible in the Bible, in my actions and what I do. And not only that, but if somebody else is holding me responsible, it gives me freedom. Freedom of worry that maybe I'm not really getting what God wants me to do. Because I submit myself to somebody and they direct me under the anointing of God. They direct me and I will be constantly doing only what God wants me to do. And I don't have to worry about that. So these things draw people into the shepherding movement. Because the shepherding movement, in both the shepherding movement and the Church of Christ movement, which ended up being called the International Church of Christ, both movements were very similar. Both of them had people in charge who told everybody under them how to live. To the point... Kip McKean, who was the head of the Church of Christ, would tell people what color to wear. He wrote this, by the way. He said, in the past, this is when he's starting to change. In the past, I, if I told you to wear purple, you wore purple. I think he's just using that as an example. But I do know that both groups were very dictatorial about what you do and what you don't do. So if my shepherd tells me it's okay to buy a car, I will buy a car. But first of all, I will probably have to show him my bank records so he knows I've been tithing. Why? Because he is my shepherd. He is my covering. And he's protecting me from human errors. It sounds fantastic on the front end. And so a lot of people joined probably millions of the charismatic movement, hundreds of thousands from the Church of Christ. By the way, Kit McKean started this, and they are very anti-charismatic, and he started this up in Boston, right about the same time that the shepherding movement is becoming very popular in Florida and then spreading out. But Kit McKean has this small church of 50, 70 some people, and they want him to be pastor. He says, only if, now they're very baptism-centered, only if everybody is re-baptized into discipleship. So everybody re-baptizes into discipleship, and within years the church is booming. It's growing. So many people coming to it. And so he moves to California. Everything just keeps on growing. He hits the college communities. Kids are becoming schooled in Kip McKean's form of shepherding and everybody's submitting to these people and of course the tithes go up. In the case of the charismatic movement they're going up to five people based out of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, it's gonna be Don Basham, Ern Baxter, Derek Prince, Bob Mumford, and I forget the fifth guy. So they're getting all the tithes from everybody and they submit to each other and tithe to each other. And they pass down the orders and everything to the people underneath and everybody underneath tithes upward. It's a great pyramid scheme. And I believe they thought they were doing God a service. They really thought they were helping people to be strong as Christians. 
But you can have an ideal that just doesn't work out in reality. And that is exactly what happened. Their ideal was that everybody would be friendly and wonderful, submitting to very godly shepherds. But what it became in both groups is shepherds and leaders who controlled their group. In the Church of Christ, and I'm sure it happened with the charismatic movement as well, leaders would use sins confessed to them against the people who confessed those sins. And they began dictating to them who they can date, what they could do, what they shouldn't do. I was engaged to a girl, and she wanted to join the shepherding movement. And we had never had any major disagreements or arguments. But that was unacceptable to me. I don't think she ever understood why, at least at the time, not until we did break up, not because of the shepherding movement, but we, we broke up as good friends. And she went on to the shepherding movement. She submitted herself to Bob. Bob was the guy who was the shepherd in that area. And eventually she quit, as many people did. But I've known people who continue with the shepherding movement, who have continued with the Church of Christ, all the way until their demise. There's a reason I didn't want my fiancé to join the shepherding movement. Because I knew, I knew that if she joined, there would be a third person in our relationship who become even stronger and even more powerful than me and her. Because I could see, even knowing very little of the shepherding movement at the time, I could see that control over her life by somebody else was not acceptable in a relationship that I wanted to build with her. I knew that if she would submit to him, there would be things that he would say because I was not one to submit myself to a shepherd. He would say to her, there's something wrong with that guy. A relative of mine was in Kit McKean's church and she was dating this guy that she loved and she wanted to marry. But Kit McKean's group, somebody who was shepherding her, told her, no, he's not the man for you. So she followed, she obeyed believing she was obeying God. And they found a person for her and said, he's the one. She married him years later from being in that group. Her marriage, to the best of my knowledge, was never happy because he was not the kind of guy she really wanted to marry. But he was the kind of guy her leader wanted her to marry. Now, I am aware that sometimes marriages like that can work out. And I'm also aware that you can find somebody that you think you're totally in love with, marry them, it's not going to work out. But in this case, she's still dealing with something that took place 30 years ago. And it's not just in her marriage, but her whole life has been affected by this. Don Basham and Derek Prince eventually realized that the movement they began, they started, was not right. They heard about the abuses. For a while, they still supported it and still pushed it. But eventually, they gave up. And Don Bashan repented, publicly repented, saying, we have ruined people. We have ruined marriages. Derek Prince said, well, we're kind of like that church in Revelation it started out in the spirit, ended up in the flesh. <laughs> no, it never started out in the spirit. It was an ideal, an idea that was not good, was not well planned out, and it didn't work. One of the reasons that Kit McKean's following and the Fort Lauderdale Five following fell apart is people couldn't handle constant covering, constant 
hovering over them, constant, you do this, you do that, it gets too much. It may look good, it may sound good in the beginning, but eventually it's too much and many of the people leave. For years I studied cults because I taught a class on the cults. I actually brought in people who were from the cults, leaders, and had them talk to our class and then afterwards debrief the class and, and walk them through what they learned. But in different cults or different groups, there are light demands and there's high demands. The worst groups are the high demand ones. And that is what we saw with the shepherding movement, where you had leaders giving demands for money, demands for who you dated, demands for who you hung out with, demands over these people. They were high demands, and therefore they are akin to high demand cults. No different. Kip McKean tried reviving his church, and to the best of my knowledge, still has a small group going. Fort Lauderdale Five split up, but their teachings continue. And that covering continues even today among many circles. I never submitted myself to a shepherd. I didn't like the idea of somebody telling me what to do, somebody telling me not what to do. I loved advice. I loved somebody walking with me from time to time but not controlling me, not over me like that. It's just, it's hovering, it's too much. This Ted, have a fantastic day.